In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do the super zoom effect in Adobe Premiere Pro. Hey, what's up? It's Chris from Rooker Films. And yes, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to do the super zoom effect. If you're a filmmaker, then chances are you probably have a zoom lens. Personally, I own the 24 to 105 millimeter Canon lens, and this is great, but the problem is it's limited to 105. So if I wanted to zoom into something that was really far away, then I'd need a bigger lens to do this. And this is just expensive because then I have to purchase or I have to hire a lens and that's just a nightmare. So to avoid the cost of renting or purchasing a new lens, fortunately we can do the super zoom effect to cheat this effect. So first up you want to find the location and you want to figure out a point that you want to zoom towards in your horizon. This can be a specific landmark or this can be something in the distance. You just want to make sure that you're framing up all of your shots towards this one specific point because this this is where you're going to zoom in and this is where you're going to travel the shot towards. Now on your first shot you want to be really wide to begin with, you want to roll this for around four or five seconds and then at the end of this shot you want to sharply zoom in towards that object, towards that point. Now once you've captured this you want to get up and you want to walk towards that landmark. If it's really far into the distance then you may have to walk 20 or 30 meters but if it's quite close then your distance can be shorter. Now once you're in this spot you want to frame up the landmark exactly the same as before roll the camera for around three seconds and then sharply zoom in. And then you just want to get up, walk forwards and keep repeating this process over and over and over again until we come to our final shot. Now when we're on our final shot we want to zoom in and then we want to hold that last frame for around three seconds. To make this effect look more realistic try adding some bounce at the end of your zoom. Now once we've captured all of these shots we want to get them onto the computer, load up Adobe Premiere Pro and create one epic zoom effect. So once we're inside of Adobe Premiere Pro we just want to import all of our footage and we just want to create a new sequence from all of those. So we're going to go through and we're just going to find the in and the out points of each of these different clips. So we just want to find the point where the zoom is taking place. So I'm just going to go through now and I'm just using the shortcut C on my keyboard and this is bringing up the razor tool and this is just enabling me to cut the video. And then once I've done all of that, I can just group all of these together and see what we have. Now, as you can see, that is still a bit aggressive. It's really choppy. So we just want to adjust this again. Just really fine tune this. We'll play this back again. So this effect is currently slow and you can see the cut, so it doesn't look realistic. So I'm just going to add a slight speed ramp into the middle of this. So on the second and the third clip, I'm going to go into speed slash duration and I'm just going to increase this to 200% on both of these. And then we'll just pull that back up and if we play that once again, the effect is a lot smoother. However, there is still a slight bump, but I feel like we can work with that for now. We can work with that. So now from here, I'm just going to add a little bit of cross dissolving onto all of these videos just to make that transition between each clip seamless. So there we go. If we play this back, that's really helped to blend those video clips together and it's making that transition between all of the clips seem less visible. So from here, I'm just going to select all of the videos and I'm just going to create a nested sequence from here. So I'm just going to press nest. You can rename this to whatever you want, but I'm just going to keep it as nested sequence. So one. And then from here, we're just going to add a little bit of directional blur and this is just going to add the element of motion blur. Just going to increase this to around 50% just to figure out the direction of the blur. And then at the start of the zoom, I'm just going to pull this down to 0% and create a keyframe. Scroll across to the end, I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to create a keyframe for 0. And then in the middle, I'm going to go across and I'm just going to pull this up to around 50%. So if we play this back, there's this sharp directional zoom and that basically looks like motion blur. However, this movement is still a little bit too jagged for me. It doesn't look quite realistic. so. I'm going to go inside of the nested sequence and I'm just going to delete that third clip. I feel like that's the one that's tripping us over. There you go. That's much better. But we do need to add the cross dissolve back into this. So we go into video transitions, drop the cross dissolve on top, make sure that we shorten that down and we'll just play this back. And that's so much more realistic. There you go. That's miles better, but we don't need as much blur to cover that cut now. So we can pull this down to around 10%. And there you go, that's the super zoom, it's now complete. However, to progress from here, because I shot this in a flat color profile, I need to add some color grading to this, so I'm gonna add some Lumetri color. I'll go into basic correction, and I'm just gonna select one of these random default LUTs, so we'll just select that top one there. And then I also need to add some saturation to this because it looks really desaturated, so I'm gonna search for fast color corrector. Drop this underneath that LUT. I'm gonna pull the saturation up to around 180. 
And then we'll just search for levels, drop levels on top of all of that as well. And then we'll just increase the black input level to around 20, 30, 40%. And there you go, that is the super zoom effect now complete. If you enjoyed watching this video, then please do let me know in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe and push that bell icon to stay updated on all future uploads. Thank you ever so much for watching. I really do truly appreciate it. I hope you're having the most incredible day today. I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.